So welcome to Equestrian Life's fortnightly recap. We look forward to bringing you interesting stories, lots of action and some behind the scenes things as well. So sit back and enjoy. So I'm at Clarendon, a uh, week before the State Dressage Championships, and who would I run to driving out with a fabulous horse on board but Judy Dirks. You're still competing, Judy? Still competing. <laughs> Absolutely love it, and I can't get enough of it, and of course, and I'm back again tomorrow as well. Oh, fantastic. So what horse did you have on board? I have a lovely black mare called Donna Summer, uh, owned by Anne and Hamilton Barber. And she just did a Priest and George test and apparently she won it. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Another one on the way up to Grand Prix. Hopefully. It's been an exciting few weeks for you. Yeah, it's been an interesting, it's yeah, been a bit of a left field thing, yeah. So, um, yeah, just waiting to hear the result from from uh, everybody regarding the reasons why the appeal was not held. So that will be very interesting to see for sure. Yes, I think it'll be very interesting to work that one out. But anyway take a bit of working out to work what they say out I'm sure I think you know I think some people might think it's a little bit strange that you appeal but I think when you have an owner like you've got and lots of owners and they spend a lot of money in a traveling horse around the countryside to compete and to qualify I guess for the for the owner's benefit as well as everybody else every other competitor it's nice to see that you stand up and, and are accounted for and that, that you put your money so to speak where your mouth is because uh, it's important for all of us as members of EA to see that the right thing is done and even if the result is negative you sort of like made a point that you would really like to see more structure in the in the way that selection is done. Yeah absolutely I just I just found the whole um, the whole lead up was very confusing the constant changing of constant changing of the criteria just was and right up to the the 4th of July was was an unusual way of running things but I guess they can do what they feel necessary and I agree that you know there was some talk you know they have to put the best team together and I totally totally agree with that um, but it was it's nonetheless it was just hard to make a structure and then for a lot of people the basically the four Australian base ones to actually stick to it Yes. Um, and it, it looked like it was just pretty clear cut till the 4th of July and then of course they just changed it and just let it be a, a thing that they can, whoever they want on discretion and didn't really matter but that's that's okay but it needed to be, it did need to be a little bit sorted out. I, we all felt there was a lot of people that just scr scratched their head and couldn't understand how it could be done like that at the last minute. I, th I think what's really important is that, that there is there's often a feeling within the dressage sport, I'm sure, I'm not sailing background, it wasn't in sailing, but in dressage, a little bit, you feel a little bit that if you step over the line and you query anything, you become a bit of a victim. It's a real shame that that attitude perpetrates a little bit. And uh, do, do you think you felt a victim in your process? Um, a little bit, yes, because I, I did feel that we did did the honest thing according to the to the rules. Um, but what made what made me feel a little bit taken back is that there's a lot of camaraderie amongst riders really at the end of the day and by we had sort of a very unified unified team here in Australia four of us and it was a very amazing thing to actually have done what we all four horses did and we traveled around and it was such a unified team and it was just I felt in the in the heart of things it was it was really good for the country and it was good for the general person who could see it, it is achievable and that kind of made me a little bit more determined I, I guess I, I really felt we were unified with with a whole lot of things and it was just it was just a shame how it was done you yeah. know I, and I don't disagree with with who's in the team but I just disagreed with how the policy was just changed on the 4th of July at the last minute. And, and, and I think that's the important thing is it wasn't about the team at all. No. It was about the policy and about, about feeling that you knew from the beginning of the selection that where you stood and as it, as it went along it changed and changed and weren't sure where you stood. And I, I totally agree. I think we all, like I'm sure I speak for a lot of people, we really admire the fact you had the guts and you and Vicky to stand up and as I said, put your money and there was a lot of that in it where your mouth is. And it is for the benefit of the sport in the long run. And I think the transparency of the sport has got to become more and more to the fore. And I think what you did is fantastic. Of course, 
What I've got to say is congratulations on being first reserve all the same. Yeah, and well, uh, the team hasn't it. completely left yet. And oh, well. we wish them all the very best of oh, luck. But absolutely. horses are horses and you never know what, what happens. You never know what happens. Mm-hmm. And But um, I just... So if something happens, are you a, a travelling reserve? Are you likely to go if, if per chance and we really please... It's only, only what happened in the next three or four days. Okay, so if, if a horse ran a muck and something went wrong, terribly wrong. It would only be in the next three or four days because basically the the two that are, Brett and Alexis are all leaving, I think Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Um, And then the results come out from the appeal on the Wednesday, is it? I think they're actually out now. Okay. I think they've just come out. Oh, great. Oh, it'll be interesting to see that. A lot of interesting reading. Right. We look forward to that. (laughs) A lot of wordplay, trust me. (laughs) Anyway, I just hope that... um, in the future, I think sometimes some establish- establishments need a little bit of an adjustment because otherwise they just continue on and see at home. They just continue on and, and nothing nothing will ever change. I think and it's probably called half halt, is it? I think it, I think it was a, I think it was a half halt. And, they, and nothing like putting a, people back on their halts, huh? A little bit. I think it was. I think you've got to, they've got to. You know, you make your rules, stick to them. We've all abide to, to them. I've been in the industry for 40 something years and I've never written a complaint. I've never complained about anyone. No, that is absolutely It was I just know. about the justice of it, really. Yeah, good on you, Judy. Look, sorry to hold you up as you're driving out with Donna Summer, a winner on the back. And uh, I look forward to seeing you hit back here tomorrow. And yeah. good luck with the future. And uh, we wish the team well yeah, at week. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Roger. Thanks, Judy. Okay. So we caught up with Brett Parbury, who's uh, here for the day, also helping his wife competing on Good as Gold, who did a great job in the uh, in the FEI levels. It was super to see them, and uh, it must be great for her to have a schoolmaster that that Brett's brought up through the ranks and it's still owned by Carolyn Lieutenant. It was fantastic. But Brett, Weg on the horizon. Obviously, state championships would be out of the question for you, which is a, a bit of a sad thing for us not seeing you ride here with those great horses. But still, how's the Weg preparation going with Weltmeister? Oh, it's going well. Um, I mean, he's as fit and strong as I've ever had him. He he's probably as as the work I think is probably as good as I've ever had it. So, I mean, I'm I'm really excited about getting him there. He um, it's almost like for me the challenge now that I've got a challenge in front of me of going onto the world stage with him. I'm really making myself um, train harder and smarter and yeah I think it's coming through in him he feels great because I guess the world of crossing going to have a, a sweet taste in your mouth when you had uh, such a great success in Kentucky with a uh, beautiful victory salute finishing in the top 10 mm. so uh, that was an amazing result and uh, I'm sure you'll be looking forward to get back to WEG again I guess it's a little bit under a cloud with an appeal still waiting to be done by the time this goes to air it'll be the appeal will be done and dusted a little bit about about your feeling in consideration to that um Look, I, I, um, I mean, there's an appeal process available to anybody who goes for selection, and I think one thing that everyone really, I mean, most people will know this, but I think we we all go to these selection events and we spend a lot of money, and the owners that we represent and who have supported us for you know the six years or eight years or whatever it is to get the horse to Grand Prix, I think when the teams announced um, you owe it to your owners and your supporters if, if you feel you um, disagree with the way the process has been followed or if you um, feel that you fulfilled something that maybe it maybe was overlooked um, the, the appeal process is there for that reason and I think I don't really have a problem with anybody going having doing an appeal I don't think it's 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 I've never seen it once be someone against someone and therefore I've never really felt that it's been a negative it's been a negative thing I think it's someone feeling that the process didn't support their their efforts and and they felt like their efforts were needed to be reviewed um, and 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 their owners and I think it's a really big thing that people have to understand that it's not a, a bitter it's not someone acting bitterly against someone else. It's really about 
representing your owner and representing the investment that's been put in the horse and representing your thing and it's and it's never really against someone it's just against the interpretation of the um of the policy so so the the policy changed a little bit along the way which is understandable and these things happen there's no drama with that but for you i know you you had a horse well miser was very sick and and uh, you looked after him really well and he had so much uh, uh, care and and uh, treatment and you got him through all that and you had to compete <laughs> with a horse that wasn't totally fit, that was just coming out of a fairly serious illness to fulfill the criteria. And I guess now that those criteria have changed, it's a little bit tricky to think that maybe I didn't need to put that horse under that stress. So I guess the changing of the criteria along the way is what the problem's about, huh? Yeah, look, I I don't know all of the details behind the changing of the criteria. So for me to make a comment really was would be a little bit just firing from my own personal thing. So I'm yeah, not really, yeah. But in saying that, um, yeah, I was disappointed that the criteria was changed after our third selection event and, and, and you know, had that criteria have been changed prior to Sydney CDI, I don't think I would have started at Sydney CDI because we'd, we'd got... We, we'd only just returned Weltmeiser back to, to what we thought was full health, but he had had no work. And I, I virtually just walked my warm up at Sydney CDI and, and the horse unbelievably went in there and, and won the class. Um, but, you know, that that's just my own experience through it. And, but... Um, I guess, you know, I, the whole thing about it is the transparency of the sport. And I think it's really nice to see that the transparency of dressage becoming more and more and it's becoming more and more open and I think that's a really positive step. And I mean, the, the selectors change the criteria, then you know, they, they get good reasons why and so then we can follow that. But I guess if we had had uh, more thought in the very beginning of the policy, then these yeah. things wouldn't happen. But by the same token, whatever the outcome, we're gonna have a great team for the World of Crescent Games. Yeah. And I guess whatever the outcome is, you're pretty well nestled into a spot because you fulfilled the criteria from the very beginning, right the way through. And yeah. so well done to you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised in March I didn't think I had a chance because I had a really sick horse um, and to be in the position I'm in I'm, 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 I can't believe it but yeah I agree with you I think there's an opportunity here to to um, to form yet another uh, a really good Australian team and one that has a great team vibe and uh, and I know I'll be working hard along with whoever's selected to, to make sure that happens and, yeah. and as long as we represent Australia in the best way we can and and learn and um, you know we've got a job to do we we've we've I know I've got in my head what I want to achieve out of this whole thing um, for for Australia and and I'd like to when we do finalise the team I'd like to just put my arms around those guys and say right this is Here what we, we need to achieve right come yeah. on guys let's do it you Fantastic. know as a team because I think we miss that sometimes in this sport I yeah. think dressage doesn't lend itself to that but. Yeah. Um, I just want to, whoever's on the team with me, I'm, I'm 100, 100 percent behind them. Fantastic. And I don't. And know, that's how it should be, you know. Despite what little hiccups happen along the way, when push comes to shove, and it's all decided, and it's all out in the open, it's all clean because there's no backlash from behind the scenes, like like maybe there could be if there was no appeal. Well, then when it comes out in the open, it's decided. Yeah. Then away you go. I think I think it's a really positive step, and I really appreciate your comments. I know you're in a pretty difficult situation, and uh, we really appreciate it. But well done for qualifying that horse so well as you did under difficult circumstances, and uh, we look forward to seeing what the outcome will be but whatever it is I'm sure it's a positive thing in the in the long run for the mm. sport and one thing I, I guess it's great to be taking Weltmeiser back overseas again you know what you've got you know better the devil you know than the one you don't and yeah. he's fitter and better this time than he was for his last trip yeah. and uh, that must be really positive yeah absolutely yeah I'm looking forward to it and for the Duddy family and the Mahines who bred him um, you know to, to be taking an Australian bred horse yet again you know I mean Victory Salute was Australian bred uh, to take an Australian bred horse onto the world stage is another thing for Australia that yeah. we're really happy about and and for the Mahines and the Duddies it's um, it's just a fabulous thing I mean they they raised they he was born and raised um, in Tamworth so yeah it's fantastic yeah it's great it's really good and, and uh, yeah it's a long way to the United States from Tamworth so have a really safe trip 
I wish you all the best of luck as to everyone that's watching this, no doubt. And we look forward to seeing the final section of the team. And for you guys to have your arms around each other and really represent Australia the best you can, I know you will. So thanks for your time and uh, really good thanks, luck. Sir. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. So another person warming up for the championships in a few weeks time at States here at Syac is Kate Taylorweed and her young importer horse by Des Destano competing at novice level. Kate, it must be a bit of a come down after so many state and national championships with the Grand Prix horse and those high levels coming back down to novice. How are you coping? Yeah, the babies do test you out a lot. They, um, they uh, really bring you back down to earth after sitting on an FBI horse for the last few years. So uh, it must be a little bit frustrated with the horse with lots of talent and looseness and ha who's uh, a little bit hot and sensitive to things that will eventually make a great Grand Prix horse for sure. Trying to keep them steady for novice isn't always so easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have my coach telling me all the time, thanks Roger, <laughs> <laughs> always to, you know, not try and think that he's Grand Prix now, which is hard when there's so much power I can feel and so much talent in there. I've just got to be patient and, and wait for him to develop. Yeah, exactly. So what are you competing in at state championships? Um, he's just doing the two novices. Great. Uh, it's his first ever state champ, so it should be fun. See how it goes. Yeah. Well, uh, we look forward to seeing it and well done today. A good test, good, good warm up for the championships and yep. look forward to seeing it in the States. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. So, another uh, great rider at the competition today here at SIAC, getting ready for the state championships, Dave McKinnon. Dave spends uh, half his time working his own team of horses with his wife Robbie in the Southern Highlands and then half the time down at Wollinga Park working in conjunction with Brett Parbury. With Brett being away for the WEG hopefully, uh, all things um, equal, uh, you've got a Grand Prix ride at the state championships with um, Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah, I've managed to steal Brett and Helen's horse to uh, have a go through the Grand Prix. I just had a go at it then and it's a lot of fun. and. Brett definitely makes it look easier than it is. And um, yeah, we'll have a go and see yeah, how it goes. It, I, I saw the test, it was a great job. I mean, uh, he, he's a, a quirky character and as they get a partnership as quickly as you have with him is uh, really admirable. How, how did you feel in there? Yeah, it was, I mean, it's great just to ride at that level, you know, like you kind of, I kind of forget how, what happens. It's just, it's just enjoyable to be able to have a go at, at doing it, so yeah. Yeah, you certainly made it look easy. You might oh, have thought it was hard, but it certainly <laughs> we're all there going like, oh my God, you need to lose points for making it look so easy. Good job. And what other horses have you got coming to the state championships? So we've got uh, Legend of Loxley um, and Woodside Lady Loxley, uh, Bradgate Park Donovan, and then Robbie has uh, Holland's Ben Rococo, who's owned by Jane Bartram and Rabali Razmataz, who... Good old Raz. How old Raz, he's turning up again. He's yeah. fantastic, he's one of my favorites, all time yeah. favorites, a great crowd yeah. pleaser. It looks like being a fantastic state championship, there's lots of horses entered. Uh, it's gonna be a big weekend for you. Yeah, yeah, we're really looking forward to it and it's always a great show to go to. The guys that organize it are really easy to deal with and that the whole thing's a lot of fun, so yeah. we're really looking forward to it. And sort of winning as many ribbons as you do, it sort of makes it a little bit better, Oh, it? we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you're, always, you're always so modest. Th thanks for your time. I know you're busy with other horses to, to ride and do things, and well done with your Grand Prix ride, and we look forward to seeing you at the State Championships. You too. Thanks, Th Rog. Thanks, David. So we caught up with Alicia Tiger at uh, SIAC today at a competition. <laughs> yep. Warm up for the uh, state New South Wales State Dressage Championships yep. with CP Dresden. Yes. Uh, how's your program for the championships going? Uh, so we've changed a few things. So we came out here today to try them out. We've got a new set of bits and a new saddle. So we had to make sure it was all going to work to plan, which it did today. Um, so it was great to be able to come out here and ride in the indoor arena where we'll be competing at the state championships in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's exciting. There's a lot of horses in for the state championships I yeah. see in big classes. Yeah, well, um, the benefit of being a CD, not CDI, is your all the CDI horses and the CDN horses are all in together. So it's a sort of an even playing field. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. 
Yeah, well, we look forward to it at the championships. Have you just got the one down? I've actually got four horses. I've got two a novice horses entered, an elementary horse and the Grand Prix horse. So it'll be a busy program, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you will be indeed. And uh, yeah, good ride today. And I'm glad it all went well. And we look thank forward you. to seeing you at the state championships. Thank you. And good luck to all the other riders. Yeah, thanks, Alicia. Thank you. So, so out of sight, caught up with Riley Alexander. Riley, of course, now riding from Mullawa. And the beautiful Abba Hallow just done an inter B. Yes. And uh, yeah, I was otherwise engaged, didn't see it, but I saw him in the warm up look fantastic. So you've got a great string of horses for the state championships, Riley. Yeah, I think we've got four or five coming. Great. Including Kate's Luxor. Right, um, yeah. So we'll have Abba Hallow in the medium tour, uh, First in Friendship, and Am I Certainly Sir in the small tour and one of Abahalo's first babies, Abasiena, in the prelim. Fantastic. It's going to be exciting. There's lots and lots of horses entered for the championships. Um, no doubt you're looking forward to it with, with great expectations. They've been going really well up till this stage, so uh, a bit more pressure at the state championships, no doubt, but it doesn't seem to worry you too much. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> been around Am I allowed to ask you which is your favourite ride? Friendship. Friendship, the yeah. Big, really big man. She's just such a sweetheart. Yeah, that's great. She's come a long way too, huh? Yeah, she's getting there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hello. So um, between now and state championships, what are you up to? Uh, got just, another competition? No, we're done for now. It'll be quiet and just training at home until we're here in what, three or four weeks now. And the Abba, Abba, Abba Halo um, babies are going well? Really well. So we've got uh, two crops under saddle now. So I think there's four of them. Uh, we had Abba Halo that was equal first as a four-year-old. Um, at Dressed with the Stars this year, and his big sister Abba Siena, who will hopefully take them all on in the prelim and then later the novice this year. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you and your team in Malawa, and uh, they're always great, great promoters of the sport and great sponsors, and uh, fantastic to see you riding so well and doing so well with their horses, and we look forward to seeing you at the Thanks. States, Riley. Thank you. Pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed Equestrian Life's recap for the fortnight and we look forward to seeing you here again in two weeks' time.